Good evening. Good evening. We are here to talk about hormones tonight. Are they good or are they bad? If you were to look at the newspaper or if you were to look at any of the magazines, you'd probably see articles on how bad hormones are. Um, I saw another one this week, same one as last week, same thing as the week before. Hormones have been shown to cause cancer and heart disease. This has scared the public into taking hormones and has scared doctors sort of away from prescribing hormones. Um, and all of this, shall I say, negative publicity or hype comes from one study that was done a couple of years ago called the Women's Health Initiative Study. And in that study, they showed that hormones can cause an increase of breast cancer, heart disease, and stroke. Who wants that? That's why many women stopped hormones. That's why many doctors stopped prescribing hormones. However, since that study came out about five or six years ago, there's millions of women that are now starting to take hormones again. But why would they do so if they're so bad? Well, if they were bad, you would think that maybe we would yank out your ovaries when you were 30. We used to do that, don't do that anymore. Um, or with men, maybe we'll just castrate them if hormones are so bad. Um, they're not bad. The ones in our body are very good. They're very important to us. We used to take out ovaries when we did hysterectomies. What happened then was women crashed. Crashed and burned. They felt lousy. They got depressed. Uh, many of them found that life was not worth living anymore when we took away their ovaries. Well, nothing that happens to the body as we get older is good. It's all bad. But fortunately, we can fix some of that. We can put back in those hormones that we've been losing. The key is to try to figure out which hormones to put back in. For years, we put back in what's called a synthetic estrogen and a synthetic progestin. Over the last five years, we've discovered that studies show that those chemically altered hormones are harmful. There's a couple studies to show that. What we have now seen in the last couple of years is large studies looking at the bioidentical or natural hormones that we normally have in our body, which we can also prescribe when we lose our natural hormones. We have discovered that those are not harmful. They are just as beneficial as the hormones that have been there all along that we lose when we go through menopause. I'm not speaking just to women. I see there's some men in the group too. Hang in there. I'll get to you. We're talking about women's hormones now. You can sleep for a little while, and then I'll wake you up when we start talking about men. Men need hormones, too. It's not just for women. In fact, every woman in this room would probably agree, yeah, they really do need hormones. Nevertheless, there's confusion amongst the medical societies. There's confusion amongst the press. There's confusion from patients. Are they good or are they bad? There's another study showing that hormones are bad. There's another study over here showing they're not bad, they're very, harm they're very beneficial. And when you lose the hormones, it's harmful. Well, how do you make the transition? The problem is, is that we're talking about apples and oranges. They are not the same. The ones that are bad consistently are the synthetic chemically altered hormones. What does that mean? That means the chemical structure has been changed from what normally occurs in our body. Why would we put something in that's chemically altered or changed. Why do we do that? Do we do that? Do we chemically alter it to make it better? Mm, no. In fact, it makes it much worse. Then why do we chemically alter it if it makes it worse? We chemically alter it because the drug companies can then patent it and make a profit on it. They can't patent the bioidentical or natural hormone that normally comes from us when we're born. And that we replace when we prescribe natural or bioidentical hormones. That's the big difference that you need to understand that most doctors don't understand. And probably at the end of this lecture, you will know more about hormones than most doctors will. Because we think apples are oranges. We think they're all the same. It doesn't matter. The medical literature says they're apples and oranges. They're completely different. And if you dissect the medical literature, you'll see and understand that there's good ones, the ones that are there, the ones that we were born with, the ones that we should replace, and the ones that we chemically alter and put back in in place of those that cause harm. Aging involves increased weakness, fatigue, frailty, fractures. When we get older, we get fat. When we get older, we lose muscle, we lose strength. And all of these things are not good for us. This process is considered to be physiologic and unavoidable and unalterable by us physicians. But it's not. The loss of hormones is partly to blame for this phenomenon. 
And hormone replacement is basically the only recognized therapy to help reverse and forestall these changes. If we want to maintain maximal health, decrease our disability, decrease our deterioration as we get older, you have to replace the hormones back to the levels that we had before when we felt good and we functioned perfectly well. There's another concept that you need to understand that most of us physicians don't understand. Patients seem to understand it perfectly well. We doctors, for some reason, don't. This is normal. You take 1,000 people and you measure their hormone levels and they're going to fall between here and here. If we're down here, we say, well, it's still normal. If it's up here, we say it's normal. If a person that was young had a level this low, they wouldn't feel very well. But an older person, if they have a level down here, we say, well, that's normal. It is normal, but that's not where they feel the best, and that's not what's most optimal. Optimal is the upper end of normal where you were when we were younger.